I'm really excited for this one because I'm gonna be showing you how you can professionally color grade right from CapCut. I'm gonna be showing you a sequence of clips from a TV commercial. We did an event shoot and they're doing a TV commercial for it. All of the color grade, the edit, the sequence uh, was done in CapCut. This isn't how the sequence is gonna be for the TV commercial. It's just some clips that I really liked. Let's watch the sequence. This is my favorite clip, this drone clip. Go into this, beautiful shot of people walking in love this and then the final Hennessy shot absolutely stunning again all from CapCut if you're interested in color grading and really taking like your color grading up to the next level inside of CapCut I, I do personally and this is just my opinion I think editing is one thing and it's 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 amazing to be a good editor but to really have that final sweet touch on your footage to make it look cinematic, to make it look special and unique, you need to be a good colorist. Before we dive in, I just wanna take a moment to thank the channel sponsor, because there's no official sponsor, that is me, Matt from Digital Shift Media. I run a media production company based here in South Africa. We service clients all over the world. It's an incredible time. And our main offering is TikTok videos, TikTok campaigns, building your brand using a shifted modern way uh, of communication and reaching people so that's what we do thanks for listening let's dive into the video great so we're in CapCut today go ahead and download CapCut on your computer it's available for both windows and mac once you're in a new project drag the clips that you want to work on onto your timeline for the sake of time i don't want to grade all the clips from scratch i'm just going to grade these two the steps that i followed are exactly the same for every single clip that i did so once you have one clip down, you can apply that same thinking, the same steps, and you'll be perfectly fine. You can see this first clip is shot on from a drone in D-Cine-like. This is from a DJI Mini 3 Pro. And the first thing that we wanna do is start with good footage. This was exposed really nicely. I had to use an ND filter because it was really bright. It's a great exposed clip. We get the full dynamic range of what the Mini 3 Pro can produce. And I think it turned out great. So that's my first step, start off with good footage. There's only a limited amount you can do with bad footage, but if you are if you have an iPhone, if you have a Samsung, if you have a decent camera, your footage is gonna be perfectly fine. The second thing is you wanna bring up your color grading scopes. So just click on these three lines, go to color, oscilloscope, and say turn on. That's gonna bring these scopes at, up at the bottom where we can see our colors. And I'm gonna just make our screen, our preview screen, as big as possible. I want as much detail and space to work with these scopes and this video as possible. The third step to making this footage look extremely cinematic is changing our ratio. So in the bottom here, we're gonna to go to ratio and we're gonna change it to 2.35 by one. This is a cinema ratio. You can see that our canvas is now wider than our video. So I'm gonna to need to drag this and increase it until it snaps into place. And then I can just drag our clip down or up. And I kind of like how the city is in the middle. So I'm gonna leave it there. And then for the, the same thing for this clip as well, we're gonna need to drag that and it's gonna snap into place and I'm just gonna drag it down. So we get to see that sun and the plant kind of covers the whole image. And that gives us a cinema scope that looks already beautiful and cinematic. This was all shot on a Sony. So we're gonna be adding a color conversion to our footage. If you're shooting on S-Log3 and a Sony, you can search for a color conversion online. Search S-Log3, S-Gamut3 to Rec 709. And how you do that is you click on your clip you go to adjustment and over here you can see we have a LUT option. So under none, I'm gonna select my S-Log3 LUT and that's gonna apply the color conversion to my footage. If you're shooting on an iPhone, you won't have to worry about this because your footage would, would most likely be shot in Rec. 709 and uh, not Log. Log has that kind of washed out minimal color effect. The fourth step is color balancing. And this is kind of the first step of grading, but it's the fourth step in our video. We wanna color balance our video so that the colors are balanced. So what we wanna do is push our video and our colors down to around 50 and raise them to around 950 before they start to clip. So what I'm gonna do is select my clip, go to my curves, and over here, I'm gonna add a beat near the bottom and I'm gonna add a beat near the top. And what I do, as I start to drag that down, you can see that those colors start to extend down towards the bottom. And again, around about 50 on our bottom end, and I just wanna drag this up a bit so that our highlights uh, are closer to the top. So fortunately, for the sake of explanation, this video is actually pretty balanced. If I go to this clip, you can see that this is far less balanced. Our, ba our color balancing is off. The reds kind of finish at 150, 648, and our blues go all the way down to 71. So this is something that we're gonna wanna work with as well, and I'll show you exactly how to do it. 
But again, I'm just going to drag everything down a bit, making sure not to drag it too far down. As soon as it's, it goes below zero, it starts to crush our colors. And we don't want our footage to be crushed because then we lose detail. That may be a bit much. I'm going to drag it up a bit. And then our highlights, I'm going to drag up a little bit. Again, we don't want to push them beyond, you know, the 1023 line because then we start to um, peak our highlights and we lose detail in our highlights. You can already see because this line is flat, it means we did lose some detail in those highlights, but we're shooting directly into the sun. So that makes sense. Okay, for color balancing, I wanna bring red's shadows down. You can see red, the shadows are higher than blue. So make two points just like we did, and I'm gonna drag red down a little bit. You can see our footage is already looking more balanced. That that worked wonders. And what I'm gonna do as well is add a beat in the midtones, and I'm just gonna drag those up slightly so that they more match. And then for blue, let's go to blue and add three beats as well. I'm going to drag my blue down just a tad so that it kind of matches the uh, the green and the red. Perfect. That's that looks a, a lot better. We could color balance for an eternity, but we're going to leave it at that for now. The sun's rays look white and we have this beautiful image there. Our next step is kind of a three in one. We're going to be adding saturation, contrast and adjusting our color temperature dependent on if there's some small tweaks we need to make to the color balancing. So Go to basic under adjustment and here we have the saturation tab for drone footage i'm generally cranking this up to 50. for contrast i like to add a couple more points the purpose of the curve that we did here was also to add some contrast and to extend our color range up a bit and our extend our, our, our shadows and highlights our bright points and low points so i'm just going to add a bit of contrast and what we're gonna do here under temp is we can shift our color temperature. You can see that as we drag it colder, the blue highlights go up, and as we drag it warmer, the red goes up. This clip looks, uh, looks really good to me, so I'm just gonna leave the color temperature as is. All right, for this clip, I'm gonna add some saturation. That's starting to bring some color back. I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast. We're already kind of peaking, so I may actually reduce that a bit uh, in a bit. And my color temperature, I'm just going to play around a bit here and I like it that it's a little bit colder uh, that brings back some of the blue of the sky. So I'm going to leave it a little bit colder for now. Our next step is to play with our HSL, our hue, saturation and luminance features. Now go back to adjustment, click HSL and here we get to start adding a base look, something that we want to go for. So I really, this, this footage looks great. We can see kind of orange on the beach sand and then blue in the water and blue in the sky. So I want to really exaggerate this. I want that orange and teal look. So I'm going to isolate my orange color. So I could just click on the orange dot. And then all we want to do is I'm going to increase my saturation of my oranges. You can see if I drag it up and down, it's just affecting the orange color in the image. So I'm going to make that around 45 and that's going to bring some saturation into into the beach sand. And then I'm going to go to my blues, which, you know, is going to affect the sky and the, the ocean. And I'm going to start working with the hue. So with hue, we can change the color of that. You can see, depending on which way I go, we can change the color. Let's make that minus 56 to get that kind of cyan teal look. And my saturation, I'm going to increase it to around 30 points just to bring some color in there. And then my brightness, again, I can change this up, but I'm going to leave it at zero. I'm going to try and achieve the same effect for this clip under my orange. I'm going to change my hue to minus 85. And I'm going to increase my saturation on my oranges to 35. And then for the blues, I'm going to make this minus 45. And there we go. You can see some of that, that teal color is coming back. So if it's at zero, we're gonna bring some teal. I actually like it if we push it maybe to around 50, and then I'm gonna increase the saturation by a bit. So you can see we uh, we now, and I have to look through my glasses here, we now have a specific look to our, our picture. It's starting to get that orange and teal feel. A stylistic choice that I love and what I used for these clips is I went to effects, I went to lens, and at this point, this is our next step. We're gonna add edge glow. Essentially drag your effect and drag it right onto your clip. If I go here to my glow, I can increase that or decrease that. And this is a beautiful effect. I, I absolutely love how it makes the picture look. I'm gonna leave this one at around 45. And let's go back to this one. And I'm gonna change it not too much so that you know it looks super artificial. 
just enough where we can pick it up if we're looking and it just adds a cinematic feel to our picture. That is already looking absolutely beautiful. So now that we have our base look and style done, we get to add a filter. Our image is color balanced and we can add a filter to our liking. So funnily enough, I'm not a big fan of filters and LUTs. I love to get my look, you know, just naturally, but CapCut has some surprisingly great filters. And the one that I used for all of these is I went to movies and I used the hope filter. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that right onto my clip. And I, I really don't like it at a hundred, but I'm going to decrease the strength to around 20. And we can see that definitely adds a certain look, maybe even 25 that adds a certain look, a green, a beautiful look to the image. Let's do the same for the palm. Now this uh, is a bit too high for me as well. I'm gonna drag that to 38 and decrease it. This is really starting to look like a, uh, a film piece, a cinematic, some cinematic footage. Guys, we're almost there. We have the look down. There's just some secret sauce that I want you to add. Use your discretion to figure out what you can do next. So for my highlights, I think I wanna add a bit more separation in these clouds. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase my highlights to around 13. And I just want a bit more darkness in my shadows so if i drag that down it's going to add some contrast and i'm going to make that minus 23 and then same thing here guys for my highlights i'm going to drag them up a little bit just to add some more brightness to the sun and you know what i want to do let's see what happens let's increase our shadows as well to around 10. i think what that's done is We've gone from quite a dark image to something that looks well lit and uh, we can still see the plant, but we can also see the sky. I really like that. And I'm just going to bring down my saturation a little bit because those colors are, they're popping. All right, guys, this is the secret sauce. I promise you this has not let me down ever. Go to your filters, go to clear under life, go to clear and drag it onto your timeline. Don't drag it onto a clip. And I just want to show you quickly what this has done. If I disable clear and add it, it just, I don't know what it does. I honestly don't know what it does. It just makes footage look better. <laughs> it kind of illuminates everything and adds a beautiful, clear, soft touch to it. Um, I don't know what it does. It just always does it better. So apply that clear filter to your clip once you're, uh, once you're ready to apply it, once you've done all your effects. The last thing I can say for getting really cinematic footage is you want to stabilize your clip. So go to video, click stabilize. It's going to add stabilization. You know how to you know what that does. And what I'm gonna do here is because I shot this in 60 FPS, I'm gonna click Command R to open up my read time tools. Alternatively, just click your clip and go speed. And uh, I'm just gonna drag this to 50% because we're on a 30 FPS timeline. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna slow my footage down by a half. Wow, that looks really good. And we can cut it there. We don't need it to be longer. The last thing I did to this drone clip was I added in a light leak. And what we're going to do is add leak one. And that's going to go and I'm going to end it when this ends. It's way, 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 way too strong as it is. So I'm going to drag that atmosphere way down and even the speed way down. So it becomes more of a static effect for our clip. That looks beautiful. Dude. Here we go, guys. Those are all the steps. So just to recap, start with good footage. Bring up your scope so you can see what you're doing. Change your aspect ratio. With log footage, you generally want to convert it to Rec. 7 or 9 color space. Color balance our clips. Start playing with those curves, getting that contrast and making sure everything's balanced. Add some contrast, saturation and color temperature. Use your hue, saturation and luminance buttons to start to play and get that base look. You're then going to add some edge glow. You're going to add a filter that you think enhances your clips and gives you the look you want. Add that final secret source, which is that clear filter, stabilize your footage. And then finally, you can add any sort of track-ins and any sort of effects that you want to do to the position, just like this. Click on your clip, under video, go basic, go to scale and position and add a keyframe. And then go to the end of your clip and tab, you know, one arrow back so that it doesn't go over into the next clip. And we can just add another keyframe to our scale and our position. So if we wanted to do a track-in, we can see now our footage, you know, tracks in as we go, which has a, a really nice effect to it. And that's exactly how I achieved what I think is some beautiful TV commercial footage all directly from CapCut. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you found this informative, please go ahead and drop me a like. It helps. Drop me a comment and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much, guys. Goodbye.